A lot of you are trying to find inspiration and motivation with a depressed mindset. You're depressed because you're not doing shit with yourself. You don't find inspiration by not living in the grip of life. You need to live in the grip of life to find inspiration. Put challenges in front of yourself. When you put a challenge in front of yourself and you attack it, that's when you find inspiration. Try to be 10% better than you were last week. So if you're running 30 miles a week, run 33. If you're swimming 500 meters, swim 550. If some of you aren't doing shit, your 10% is just getting off the couch. The more you walk away from accountability, the weaker you become. Find yourself in the grip of life. You can't find yourself by doing nothing. Let me see if I can fix myself. So I said, if I can just walk one more mile after being in the worst shape of my entire life, this would change everything for me mentally going forward. From this kid who came from dirt nothing, who couldn't read until he was in a junior in high school and is now here, I went, I walked a mile. I said, hmm, maybe I can walk one more mile. Maybe I can walk another mile. At mile 81, my ex-wife looked at me and said, you're not gonna make the time. When your mind knows it's not going to quit, and this is what I found out, this is my 40% rule. When your mind knows it's not gonna quit, your body will adapt to whatever is in front of it. I ended up running 20 more miles, I did 101 miles in 19 hours and six minutes. And that one day changed, that one 19 hours, it wasn't SEAL training, it wasn't Ranger School, it wasn't Delta Force, it wasn't any of that crap I went through. It was this 19 hours and 6 minutes that forever changed my life to know that we as human beings are capable of anything. And we don't need any special kind of parents or tools to get there. So I'll end you with this. Don't stop when you're tired, stop when you're done. Thank you very much. Come on. Get it. 17. They don't know me, son. Get it. 18. You me, son. Get it. 19. You me, son. Yeah. 20. You got the more. Me, yeah. 21. Yeah. Get it again. Come on. We want to see it. Good. 22. Who's going to carry the boats and the logs? That's you, buddy. Come on. 23. Come on. 24. One more, David. Who's one more to carry the boats? You're going to do it. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. You did it. Yeah. One thing that changed my life is my grandfather. He told me, you're going nowhere in your life. You're not being anything. As bad as that hurt me, it got me to pull my head out of my ass. So learn to stay hard. Have thick skin and do what's right. What you need is the one thing I talk about in my book, which is straight up brutal work ethic. You have to be willing to outwork everybody in the world. And that, that that's the hard part. That's the hard part. This isn't like some five step process where if you do these five steps, you're gonna end up with this magical world. No. Nah. I'm basically teaching you how to callous over your victim's mentality. This is all about the quitting mind. So what's the quitting mind? So let's say it's day one of a job interview. You have your clothes laid out. You've been preparing for weeks and weeks and weeks. You show up and you bring your best self. After a couple months, you start showing up to work a little later. You don't look as good, your breakfast isn't ready, your mind's getting softer. Repetition every day. Stay hard. Most important conversation is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, you go to bed with it. Eventually, you act on it. We live in a world now that's so kind. We, we find the kind way around everything. Like, if you don't look good, I have to find a kind way of saying, I don't like your shirt. Right. That's not the approach. If that's the approach you're looking for, that book is not for you. Mm. Can't hurt me is not for you. The approach you have to take, at least I took, you take whatever approach you want. The conversation had to be a real honest conversation in the accountability mirror. Guess what? I was fat. Don't find a kind word to say that, you know what? 
I've gained some weight. No, you're fat. When I couldn't read, not like, hey, you know, you've a learning disability. No, I cannot read. At a fourth grade reading level, I'm struggling, and sometimes I call myself stupid. Not in a way to put myself down. Sometimes you act on it good, sometimes bad. You gotta change the internal dialogue. That person in your head that's talking that to you, until you change the internal dialogue in your head, until you callous over the victim's mentality that the world is out to get you because of you are the only, you gotta change that shit. I once had that mentality that no one understands what the fuck I'm going through. And if you keep that mentality, you're gonna stay in the same exact spot that you're in, that no one understands me. There's a whole, there's millions of people. Why do you think a book that I self-published, you know, is doing so well? With a story that's so fucked up. People are like, I'll never get what I went to a publishing house. Like, who's gonna resonate with this story? No one's gonna buy this book. I'm like, are you not in the world? Are you not in society? You're never alone. Everybody's going through shit. So when people get this mentality of like, you don't understand me, you can throw a rock to someone that can understand you if they're willing to break themselves down and stop hiding. Mm -hmm. A lot of people understand you, mm -hmm. but you gotta stop hiding. And that's why I tell people, a lot of people are going through shit. They just hide better than you did. That's all they did. They're just hiding better. Don't find words to make yourself feel better because that's what, so we hang around people that make us feel better, that tell us what we want to hear, not what we need to hear. And so we stay away from those people and we stay away from those people, like our internal dialogue becomes that kind, it's okay, it's not okay. So that's where it starts. It starts with that accountability of it's not okay anymore. This can no longer be okay. And calling yourself out for exactly what you are and exactly how you need to fix it. A lot of us give total control to life. We don't have any control of it. We just give all control to life. I do this shit every morning to prepare my mind for what life's gonna throw at me. A healthy body gives you a healthy mind. That's what it's about. So if you go into battle, you want to go into battle with the right mindset, the right gear. In combat, you wear body armor. But what we do wrong is we don't strengthen our minds. You got to strengthen your mind. Take control of that. Most of us live our entire lives avoiding failure. It's funny. I walk around, people come up to me and they say, man, you're that Navy SEAL you went to Ranger School, you were, you know, Air Force Tag P, you know, you uh, did the pull-up record, you run all these ultra races, all this shit, man. The funny thing about it that I think about is this, they know that part of me. This is the part I know about myself. I felt the ASVAB test to get in the military three times. In the Air Force, throw that pararescue. In the SEALs, it took me three times to get through Navy SEAL training. The pull-up record took me three times. This is what I know about me. So what I'm saying is this, you can't live your life being afraid to fail. All those failures made me the success in the day. Stay hard, stay in the fight. As you know, I'm a serious introvert and um, very afraid of people. I, I uh, got judged so much growing up that this is uncomfortable for me. All these podcasts, you know, that's why I post once a week. But the one thing I realized uh, why I wrote the book is honestly, I have a story to tell as we all have a story to tell. And what I realized on my journey was a lot of us don't believe that we can achieve the impossible. And along my journey, I started realizing, man, I gotta f tell some people about this, sh man. Like, I discovered something that some people have, but they don't even f know. All of us have it. But along this way, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't a theorist. I became a practitioner. And I was like, my God, I'm busting down so many barriers of, like, I have a learning disability. Okay. 
but I'm catching up with everybody. I, I figured that out. I figured out all these negative things in my life that were keeping me in this hole. I'm like, I gotta tell people, man, that, hang on a second, man. You can achieve the absolute impossible.